1.145 trillion. That is how many megabytes of data is being created every single day in the modern world. That means that in the five seconds that you've spent watching this very video so far, more than 66,000 gigabytes of data has already been generated. I used to play this game called Civilization V, where you're basically taking like a civilization through the ages. The game is divided into different eras. You've got the medieval age, you've got the Renaissance age, and the last era of the game is called the information age. And as a kid, I never really understood why it was called the information age. But years later, when I found myself learning data science, I now finally understand where this name comes from. The amount of data that exists in the world today is baffling. But what's even more baffling is how much we can do with this data. Data has long been used, for example, in healthcare to detect diseases and to save millions and millions of human lives. It's also being used in banks, fraud detection departments, and of course, all those pesky ads on YouTube for example, the one that you probably watched before this video, they've all been fed to you based on the data that YouTube has on your preferences and quite frankly, what you are most likely to buy. And all of these examples are really just a tipping point of what we can do with data science. And to that effect, in this video, I'm hopefully gonna be able to give you a glimpse of the amazing world of data science by showing you my step-by-step -step process of what I would do in 2023 to learn data science. And this is not like a normal how to learn data science video. My biggest belief is that the human brain is not supposed to learn by just ingesting information. The human brain is supposed to learn things by putting information into action. So in this video, I'm going to be practicing what I preach. I'm gonna actually show you a very simple process that you can take to build a very simple data science project that you can literally do right after you watch this video. So if that's interesting to you, I suggest you keep watching because I think this video is gonna be really, really valuable to you. Step number one, learn the Python programming language. While data science itself is not really coding per se, a programming language is the number one main tool that you'll be using with all of your data science work. So you might as well learn this first. In terms of how to actually learn Python, the course that I always recommend you start with is Python for Everybody on Coursera. The other course I often talk about is Zero to Mastery is Python Bootcamp. I really like it, but that one is more sort of a reference course. It's like, it goes over everything when it comes to Python, but actually learning everything in the beginning is in my opinion, the wrong way of going about learning. We'll talk about that more in a second. I'm also going to pre-plug my own Python course that I'm actually developing right now. If you want to be taught by me, my course is gonna be linked down below in the description whenever it's ready. It's not ready yet as of recording this video, but like really, I don't care which Python course you take. Trust me, all of these courses are going to teach you Python. You're going to learn it. It's just about whose teaching style and what kind of course do you personally prefer. Step number two, which might sound counterintuitive, is to learn as little as possible of basic data science concepts to familiarize yourself with the basic tools like Jupyter, Anaconda, and some other more basic libraries just to understand what they mean and what they do. In my strong view, in the beginning, you should be learning as little as you can. Learn, just learn the basics to get you going, to get you building something actual and something practical. And then as you go, you can go on and learn some of those details and some of those more advanced concepts. Then step number three, find a problem that you are interested in and then go build it and figure out the steps of building it along the way. Like I said, most people do this completely in the wrong order. Most people go the route of trying to learn everything first and then applying. But the problem with that approach is that by the time you go to actually apply this stuff, you've already forgotten most of the details. You no longer remember what a decorator is. You no longer remember even how to do a loop if you've never actually done it. Don't build Mickey Mouse projects. We need to do real data science, meaning we need real data solving a real problem, a real question. And all of this might sound daunting to you, but honestly, it's not as daunting as it sounds. The project I'm gonna be showing you is about understanding rent prices by area in the city of Dubai. 
The reason I wanted to do this project is because I'm currently considering moving to Dubai and obviously the big problem that I want to solve is well where am I going to rent and what is a good price to rent for. For you this can be anything like renting slash apartment prices is a good example but if you're not considering moving to Dubai don't use Dubai data use data from New York from London wherever you live or if you're considering buying a car in your location maybe you you want to get data about car prices and then extract something from it that is interesting to you. So then how do we get data? The general method to get the data from the internet is called web scraping. You can build one yourself and that's fine but you may run into many issues like captures so to make this easy and to not have to worry about any of this you can use a website called Bright Data. Bright Data is basically a data collection platform that allows you to easily build your own web scraper in a way that bypasses all of these issues that we just talked about. And yes Bright Data are sponsoring this video but you should use them because it makes the process of gathering data so much easier and so much faster. When you go to brightdata.com you can get started with a free trial by clicking on start free trial. I'm not going to do that because I already have an account. We have a bunch of different things here. The one that we're interested in here is collectors. Essentially, you can build your own web scraper using these pre-built functions that they have made for you. They have even a couple of templates available to you, for example, of eBay data or Twitter hashtag research. But honestly, if you really want to build an impressive project, you should be building your own. So what I would do is click on start from scratch which is going to take you to this window. The website that I'm going to be gathering data from is this one called propertyfinder.ae It's basically a place to rent apartments in Dubai. So in the first stage here what I'm doing is I'm running a for loop 300 times. I'm going to navigate this page where I've seen that the page number is essentially captured in this page equals part of this URL. Then I'm calling this function called next stage and, and if you want to know what these functions do you can go on here click on help which is basically going to give you very understandable explanations of all these pre-built functions that they've given for you. You can see that next stage what it does is run the next stage of the crawler with the specified inputs. What that means is we go in to number two here it's now going to run this code here and it's going to give it page link with the value of this URL and in here call the function navigate with input.pagelink. Again, if you look at what the navigate function does, it navigates the browser to a URL. So basically, once this runs, it's going to navigate to the link that we just gave it, which is now in the first iteration, for example, again, it's going to be the first page, a page that, page that looks like this. And the third important function you want to be aware of is this one called parse. And it, it basically takes the HTML of the page which looks like this and passes it into a variable that you can now manipulate. And when it runs this function, this parser code that you can see here at the bottom is actually run. It's gonna return an object with links that are equal to this expression over here. If so I wanted to grab the link to all of these different apartments, and what you can do is go and inspect on one of these cards and then inside the HTML, you can see that it's this A tag that I'm looking for and I'm looking for the href tag of this card and basically this is jQuery and this is just basically how you grab that href using jQuery. If you don't know how all of this works you can literally just go on chat GPT and ask it how to grab a certain URL from a certain tag using jQuery. This data object is now going to have an object with a list of all of these links. Then it's going to again run the next stage. The third stage we have here is now again it's going to navigate to that URL which is now going to be one of these URLs for example this one. It's going to wait for a couple of things to load and we call in pause which is now going to take all the data that I actually want to get from this page over here. And the, basically the last step of running any web scraper on Bright Data is going to be to run this collect function, which basically what that does, basically just collects all of this data and it returns it to you. Once you're done with this, you can always click this Click this button over here to essentially run this code, like a preview of this code to, to see how it works and to test it out. You can go and e either initiate it by API or you can even init just initiate it manually from right here. As you can see, it's gone through 5,000 pages and it's got us around 4,800 results. And the result that we get is going to look 
so multiply this and the next thing because this data is always just going to be a bit messy when you get it from directly from the web scraper the next thing i've done is cleaned up the data using python then what this whole line does it collects and cleans up the entire data into a csv which i can then open that looks somewhat like this we have the area that is now cleaned up the apartment type, whether it's an apartment, a villa, a townhouse, size in square meters, how many bedrooms it has. Next thing that we are going to do is use something called a Jupyter Notebook, which is like a sort of data science code editor. I'm going to put the process and the lines that you need to do to install all of this on the screen now. I can't remember what they are because it's such a long time since I did this. I'm going to open a Jupyter Notebook, which is going to open like this new Python 3. And here we can do a bunch of things. And for this particular project, we're going to be learning a tool called Pandas, which is going to be import by import Pandas as PD. You go shift enter to enter a new line. Dubai equals p.read.read CSV and the name of the file inside of it which we can see right here. It's called Dubai underscore data dot CSV. Then to actually see what is inside our data, we can just write it down, press shift enter, and we can see our data now loaded into a data frame inside of Pandas. Now we can start learning a bunch of things about it. We can go Dubai dot info, get some information about our data. We can see that all the types of all of our columns, or we can go Dubai dot describe, which is another pandas function, basically gives us the count, the means, the standard deviations of all the numeric columns that we have. For example, we can see straight away that the average price of all of the apartments, $4,399 per month, which is a lot. And there's a bunch of things you can do in pandas. This video is just gonna be a very simple overview to give you an idea. Then And then what I want you to do is again, collect, your data and then go and figure out the things that you can do in pandas and how to use it to learn the things that you want to learn when i'm looking at this what do i actually want to learn from this data what's actually interesting to me well i know that i'm not going to be renting a villa i'm not going to be renting an apartment most likely so what i would like to do is filter this data set so that we only see apartments rather than villas if we can save as a variable a filtered set of this data so we can go if I have apartments equals Dubai, something like this, what this is saying that we want a subset of our data type where the apartment type equals apartment. Let's see if that works. That worked. By the way, you can always pre press tab to like auto complete. Now we get 5,000 items instead of 7,000 whatever. So now for this, we can go describe to see what the means and all of that are. Now we can see for that for apartments, the average price is only 3000, the median is around 2000. Whereas for all of them, including villas and everything, it was a lot higher. Okay, this is a lot more interesting to me already. But then the other thing about this is that I know that I'm gonna want a one bedroom apartment. So I'd like to further filter this to only have one bedroom apartment to give me an idea of the average price for one bedroom apartments. So we're gonna use the same function. We're gonna go DB one bed, equals db apartments and now we can see what we get it works it doesn't seem to work interesting interesting maybe this is actually a string you see that we now have 1895 one bedroom apartments now if we describe this or we can just use the function median to get the medium price because that's all i really want to know we can see that the median of all of these values, $1,800, which is interesting. Another way we filtered the data to only include apartments and to only include one bed apartment. Now that we've learned some basic things about the entire data set that we have, what we can do, use this variable that we defined and group it by the area. So group by area. And we have an error because it's, it's just group by, not group. And from this grouping, we wanna get the median. Median price by area grouped, and here is what it looks like. What we also want to do is sort this. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. The function we need is sort underscore values. And the thing we want to sort by, the look at it is inside curly brackets. And we want the name of the column, which is price USD per month. It would have been better to just name it price, but oh well do that and there is a thing that we need to do which is ascending equals false and we'll see what we get we get 
all the Dubai areas in ascending order. And actually what it's doing here is sort of truncating it a bit, which we don't want. And there to get rid of this truncating, what I would do is go on ChatGPT on Google and ask it how to remove it. But I already did that to save time is something like this PD the options the display the max rows equals the length of the data frame that we have which in this case is Dubai apartments one bed so now when we run this again we're hopefully not going to have this strong casing we're going to actually see all of them all the areas the average price well the median price for all of them in order this is extremely instructive for me because when I come about an area that I was looking at is Jumeirah Lake Towers you can see that the average price per month for a one bedroom apartment is $1,900. So you can sort of see that that is sort of something that I could probably expect and if I get something good that's below that, I know that that's a good deal. So as you can see, I'm literally learning interesting things to me to solve problems for me from data using data science simply in a freaking half an hour video, how long, however long this video is. And a bonus step number six is simply to repeat the same process for different data science tools, different kinds of data science projects to build up your toolkit while at the same time building impressive and interesting data science projects for your portfolio. With that, if you did get a value out of this video, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button. I know it's like a dumb thing for YouTubers to always ask, like, oh, hit the like button, but it does genuinely help. If you haven't learned programming yet, you might be interested in my video of how I would learn to code in 2023, which is going to be linked up here. With that, I will see you in the next video.